So uh, I was wondering how to uh, introduce this talk and um, I have a friend who uh, was on a Zoom meeting. We have lots of Headless Way Zoom meetings throughout the week free. Anyone's welcome to drop in if you're interested. And um, his friend, American, was saying that uh, he was driving to the market with his dad and uh, he said, well, I've got to be back at 12 for the Zoom meeting, the Headless Way Zoom meeting. And uh, his dad said, oh, well, what's that then? And Rick said, uh, well, just notice you're driving, you can see the wheel, you can see your arms reaching out, and, but you can't see your head. You can't see your head. And um, his dad said, yeah, I get that. See? There was a pause, and he went, but what the hell does that mean? <laughs> And I was talking to Ricky and he said, oh, well, it's very easy in a way to notice you can't see your head. But how, what does it mean? So uh, I don't have long, but I'm going to share with you the experience and the meaning. The experience is incredibly simple, but I'm just, it's about your identity. It's about what you are here and now in your own experience. And it's something that, strictly speaking, no one can tell you about. Because only you are you. Only you are right where you are. Only you are looking out right now the place you're looking out of. Only you can feel your breathing. And uh, what I'm going to do is share a, a, a few awareness exercises that uh, I think direct our attention to this place that is nearer to you than your breathing. Now, uh, you've probably come across spiritual ideas that say your true nature is boundless, still, open, timeless, and that this is a great treasure to become aware of what you really are. And uh, that's what I am here to share with you. And it's not a wow, it's not a high, it's something incredibly simple. But it is, uh, I've been uh, exploring this for more than 50 years. Uh, I think in the uh, description of this talk, I uh, mentioned a guy called Douglas Harding. So I met him more than 50 years ago. And I'm just going to show you um, a map of you. Can you see that? So it's like a mandala. And this is based on the, the observation that what you are changes with the range of the observer. So I'm not going to go on about this for a long time. I'm going to get to the experience. But you can see me. And what I look like depends on how far away you are. If you're in the front row, I look different from what I look like in the back row. And if you could come up to me, that you'd lose all of Richard and just get my face. And if you could come closer, it's in principle verifiable. You'd get patch of skin, and then you'd get cells, and then you'd get molecules, and then you'd get atoms. And if you, the nearer you get to me here, the less there is. Until you get on contact, there's practically nothing. And if you went away, then you would find eventually Richard, and then the, the festival, and then England, and the planet, and the star, and the galaxy. These are all layers of your body. It's a new way of thinking about yourself. And you identify with these layers. I identify with Richard, I identify with my family, I identify with my nation, I hope I identify with my planet, I identify with an aching shoulder. So our identity is elastic. Now the question is, what are you at the center of all those layers? Clearly no one can tell you because only you are there. So I'm going to ask you to look. <laughs> it's incredibly simple. To look at what it's like at zero. And uh, this is scientific in a way. It's not asking you to believe anything, it's asking you to pay attention. So the heart of what I'm asking you to do is meditation, is attention. 
And it is first attention to what you're looking out at and then attention to the place you're looking from. So I'm going to ask you to do something very simple and childlike and a bit embarrassing in public. But I'll do it and uh, we won't tell anybody. And it's about directing your attention. Attention. So what I want you to do is to point at something in front of you and look along your finger at what you're pointing at. So I know this is the embarrassing bit. So please, if you'd like, and that what this does, there you go, you're directing your attention. And it's much better if you do it. So look along your finger and you see a thing. I'm pointing at a pole. It's got shape and a color. This is as simple as that. Now point down at the floor. You see, you're directing your attention, attention. And you might like the floor, you might not like the floor. You might understand how it was made, or you might not. It doesn't matter, you can see it. Point at your foot. Another thing, you can even move it. Come up your body, point at your knee. You see, you're looking, you're directing your attention with your finger. Point at your chest. Again, you can see something there. Now here's the important point. Point back at the place other people are looking at. So you go turn your finger around like I'm doing. Now, the place you're pointing at now is zero. Only you are there. Do you see your face? I don't. See? Do you see your head there? I don't. I, if I was to put it into words, I'd say no face, no head, open space, full of the finger and the whole festival. And all you've done there is direct your attention first out and then come closer and closer, like in the map, towards the center until you come right to the place that no one else can see. Everyone else is going to tell you, I can see your head there, Richard. I say, yeah, but you're over there. I'm here. My body's headless, you see, for me. For years, I know I've got a, a body with a head. And this is the difference between the third person and the first person. The view from outside at a certain range and the view from inside. So here's another map. This is a first person view. This is the view out. A headless body there. Now if you open your arms a bit, you'll see that your arms embrace the whole room. If you just do that, like that map, you see? My arms only embrace a little bit of the stage, but have you left? The first person embraces the world. And you look out into your world. Now this emptiness, this void, you see, if you hold your hand out like this, this is where you've got to do something to, to really benefit from it. Just hold your hand out, and what I'm going to ask you to do is bring it back past your head, you see. Now do that again, and everyone else sees your hand going past your head, third person outside view, first person is my hand gets bigger, and then disappears into the great void, and then comes out of nothing. This is so freeing, you see, so freeing. I am a space for you, I am you. From the outside, is it here's, someone might say, well, so what? Here's a so big so what, in terms of relationships. From the outside, we are head to head. If you look at me and someone else, we're face to face, we're separate. Okay, I get that. Now I pay attention to my own point of view and be my own authority and what it's like to be me. And I look at you and it's face to no face. Face to no face. Face to no face. I have your face. I trade faces. You've got my face there. And you can tell me about it. I've got your face here. I am you. This is absolutely a game changer. I have now a hundred faces. Hydra. Yes. We've been known about this for thousands of years. This is a modern way of directing your attention to your true nature. We call this a single eye. Now, you can see I've got two eyes, little peepholes in the head here. This is incredibly simple, isn't it? But I tell you, I'm not looking out of two little holes in a meatball here. I'm looking out one vast single opening, Cyclops. Now take your hand, you see, and see it disappears into the top of your single eye, you see, or the side. It's vast. How wide is that single eye? It's wider than the tent. You are big. From the outside, you're small. 
and from the outside I'm small. Now this makes sense in terms of personal development. There are four main stages, the baby, the child, the adult, and the seer. The baby's headless, pre-verbal, you're open. We love babies because they give us permission to be headless. You see, I'm putting it in my terms. But a baby's just open, pre-verbal, lovely. Now, as you're growing up, through language, you learn to see yourself as others see you. In imagination, you go out and see yourself as others see you. That is becoming aware of who you are as an individual. That is learning your name, your nationality, your gender, and all of that. You see. And you have to learn that in order to understand. I have to understand, I'm Richard on the stage. I didn't know that as a baby. If I was a baby here, I'd be going, no I, you see, no idea of being a baby. We were all in that blessed condition, you see, to begin with. But then as we grow up through language, people feed back what you are, and you look in the mirror. Now if you look in the mirror innocently, where is your face? It's there, it's not here. But what you learn to do is to take that face and turn it around and put it on and wear it. We call it the face cape. And you become aware of your appearance. You can't see it, but you become aware of it. Self-consciousness. Or your whole body, you see. And that's what everyone else is seeing. So as a child, you are in two worlds. You're headless and you're getting your head on. You're nobody and free and carefree and uh, just seeing what happens and you're learning to be a person responsible for what you say and do. And both go together. In the, when we're five, six, seven, it's a beautiful age because we're not yet in the box of our appearance. We're living from our openness, our source, but we've got some idea of how we're going down and who we are. Wonderful. But then what happens is the feedback 24-7 is you're a person. You're not space for the world, you're a person. You're not the source of the world, you're a product of the world you see. And so there's, you, who could resist that? So by the time we're adults, I say, I am what I look like. I have no doubt about it. I look in the mirror, that's me, you see. And I, that, I take responsibility. To be an adult is to be aware of who you are as a person, or as a, a family, or as a nation. You see, it's not, not just a person. But we overlook now the first person, what it's like to be yourself, which is being space for the world. You know, and sometimes you might have a drug experience and you get out of your box and then you're back in. And you say, how do I, how do I get out again? You see, the, the joke is you're never in. So the adult, third stage, baby, child, adult, third stage of the adult, adult is I'm what I look like. I'm face to face with you. I'm separate from you. I was born and I will die. All right? The great advantages of that, you know, you couldn't function if you were not deeply convinced of that. But you have lost something, and perhaps you have a feeling you're missing something. Well, you might well be, you see. Now what I'm suggesting is that there's a fourth stage here. Not just me suggesting, but the fourth stage, which is reawakening to what it's like to be you from your point of view. And you've got to be your own authority because no one else can see it for you. Everyone else is saying, no, no, you're going to head. You're a person. You're a thing. You know, you're separate. All right, got that. But I'm going to pause on a Sunday afternoon in Amsterdam. I'm just going to pause for a moment and just be my own authority and look for myself, you see. I'd like you to point back again. Point back at the place you're looking out of. No one else has the authority to say what it's like there. And I say it's wide open, boundless, aware, full of the whole festival. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.